Welcome to Casa de Confidence, a podcast for you. You'll hear some incredible women and some awesome cool dudes going confidently in the direction of their dreams and living in the purpose of their heart. You're our host, Julie DeLuca Collins, and you are our sidekick, hashtag handsome hot husband, that again, and the producer of the show, that I am. I am an author, speaker, coach, dreamer, and most of all, we help people go in the direction of their dreams and support them on their purpose. So pull up a chair, grab a drink, and make yourself at home because our casa is your casa. Welcome back and welcome to Casa de Confidence. This is Dan. And this is Julie. This is Julie. She is on location in the great Uh, city of Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Well, you're the only 10 I see. See what I did there? Oh my God, you're trying to butter me up. What a cliche from the 80s or the 70s or wherever that's from. You are. I I am trying to butter you up. So when you come home, you give me a big, big hug. You're going to get a big hug anyway. Um, However, I do want to point out something. You ready mm -hmm. for it? What? You haven't congratulated me. Congratulations, Julie. You guys can't Thank see it, you. but she's wearing her Yankees hat and she That's is right. a Yankees fan. And now she has got a World Series team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, what have they done for her lately? Not much, but now oh, they're my in the World gosh. Series. You gotta be kidding me. So anyway, we're gonna move on. That was past rude. This. That was, hey, I would are have you never having said a, that about uh, your team. Come on. I, I, really? <laughs> Okay, fine. I would have said that. For you guys that, that know, I'm a Red Sox fan. She's a Yankee fan. But Julie, yeah, looks divided like household. Lot, looks, we're a divided, united household. Divided, united. I like that. We're, you we should put lot. that on a t-shirt. Hey, you know what? Yes. No matter how many different cheese you you have, you can come together. Yes. Well, there are some differences. Mm. I could. <laughs> we don't talk about that right okay. now. Any, are you having a great time? I'm having a great time in Nashville. I am on location with girlfriends. And for anyone who hasn't done a girls trip or boys trip in a long time. I highly recommend it. It is one of these things that refills your cup. Laughter, good times, memories. I Mm. highly, highly encourage you, especially if you have one, two, three, or 10, grab them together and get yourself a girl's trip or boys, Mm. whoever you may be. Well, you know what, Julie? That's great advice. Yes, Dan. But we got to get to our guest. You're welcome. Because you and our guest, Manessa Konecki, you know what? I hope I'm saying her name right, but I'm excused from because I I didn't, I wasn't (laughs) at the interview. So, wow. Manessa. You're going to have to tune into the episode. Yeah. They are incredible. What an amazing individual. Mm. I'm so inspired by them because they are the personality with incredible vivacious zest for life. And I know that individuals who hear this interview are going to be motivated, inspired, and of course, feel like they're in the room with two friends, mm. old friends, just talking about everything. I hope you guys enjoy this interview. And don't forget, go out into this world and do something that excites you. Amazing. See you tonight. And don't forget, everybody, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. I've been talking to our next guest and we had the conversation going. I have to tell you, it would have been so easy to just keep talking without recording because this particular individual is someone who I have grown to just love, love, love. We were introduced by a mutual friend. And again, our guest is a trailblazer in reshaping work culture, um, infusing joy and fulfillment into the heart of professionals, life by optimizing efficiency flows. I love efficiency. Um, Our guest has over 20 years of expertise in research administration, and they are a seasonal Season strategist. You know what? I'm not even going to read this anymore, Manessa. Welcome to the show, my friend, <laughs> Manessa. I'm awesome, everyone. You Just are know awesome. This. And people I'm need awesome. to connect with you. <laughs> people need to connect with you because not only are you this optimal professional with wide experience, but you have this incredible soul that comes across and you embody what you talk about, which is diversity, empathy in every endeavor, which is part of the bio that I want to squeeze in there. <laughs> Thank you for saying that too. Cause like, I, but it's I think true. That it's, it's, I think that I, you know, in the world we live in today, it's so easy to get caught up in ourselves all the time. Like it's, mm-hmm. It is hard, hard work. So it's nice when it's seen, you're like, oh, thank you. It's worth it. Somebody, somebody feels it. 
Yeah. And by the way, Manessa, I can't wait to come and visit you because you're not too far from me. We're New Englanders. You're here in Mass. You're in Massachusetts. I'm in Connecticut. It's a hop, skip and a jump from yep. the Hartford area to Plymouth. You should come see me. We have this ocean view. We can come know, hang out before the, it's gorgeous. You should come see it. Oh, uh, and, and you have three dogs. What kind of dogs? Uh, mini huskies. You can see a little Luna in the back. Oh, She's over there. Oh, that's so right. There's, there's three, Luna. Oh. There's three mini huskies. One, the other two are hiding somewhere in the house, but she typically hangs out with me out here. Um, <laughs> we've uh, three dogs is chaos. Just saying. I have three. Is, I have three. You, I know. The, so you I know also the know the chaos. Know. And they're all they're all here very quietly, but they're a part of the show. So if you hear them, it's because they want to have a, a say in this uh, conversation as well. <laughs> And they always want us to like, they're silent until we start talking. And then suddenly, yeah. listen, there's some really important stuff, mom, that you need to know. Right? Yeah. She's like, okie dokie. Okie tell, dokie. Me what, tell me what I need to know, kid. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how they have these different personalities? But I really am a firm believer that their personalities really come to us for a reason. Because they Absolutely. really tap into certain things that we either, like one of them, I'm definitely the mama. Another one, I'm definitely the strict one. And the other one is just like, he amuses me. He's so funny. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We have the same in our house. Like each one has their own personality, their own role. And mm -hmm. even with Allie and me, there's like, there's different roles. Like, you know, Kira is Allie's familiar. Like she is just yeah. her familiar. Mm -hmm. But I believe Kira was actually sent by Talon, my first dog, because to get mm -hmm. like, just because she reminds me so much of him when he was mm -hmm. a puppy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, and I, animals are just, dogs are so wonderful. I know. I know. I just watched, um, a documentary. I didn't finish it because I, I have to sleep some days, you know, uh, but it was all about <laughs> I the try, I try. dogs. And I, I, I love that. I know that people say, you know, dogs, um, in dog years, you know, they're 70, they're not, but they have that, that, uh, intelligence of an 18 month old and mm -hmm. they can have that much vocabulary, which I know my dogs understand everywhere that I say, even though my, my husband thinks I'm crazy for talking to them as much as I do. They absolutely, you know, I'm, so I have a, a decolonization coach, um, mm -hmm. AJ Singh. And one of the things that him and I talked about, very recently was uh, we were talking about all the isms that we have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, classism, racism, so on and so forth, yeah. and the privileging of various races, classes. And one of the things that came up in the conversation was pr humanism, right? The privileging of being mm -hmm. a human. So we automatically position ourselves higher than the rocks, the ocean, the dogs, yes. the cats, the animals, right? And a, mm -hmm. a very human centric approach. But my approach is more like we are all we're all related. We're all connected. Yeah. We're all, you know, and so absolutely. I feel like I'm with you, not just like the, like the dogs have the intelligence of an 18 month old, let's say, right. Like based mm -hmm. off of the science that we know now, but like yeah. my dogs can sense when something is wrong. They have like, it's not always about like intellectual intelligence as much as it's also about like spiritual yeah. intelligence and, and dogs who can smell cancer. And like, so I feel like yes. I'm with you 100% on this, that like we are in, living in in yeah. a community with we our are. dogs, right? Mm -hmm. Not yeah. so much owning them or, uh, or so I, I love that. I'm all about it. I talk to them all the time. I am uh, totally in line with this. I actually spent the weekend in Key West. Did I tell you about this when, when we last spoke or was going to Key West? Key West. Yep. Yep. To celebrate Jimmy Buffett. Cause you know, I'm a big parrot head. And I, I did not know that. I knew you were going to Key West, but I had yeah. to dive off because of my ankle. So I I'm know. so tell me about this Key West. Um, first of all, I love Key West. It's it, and and even though it's very hot, it is the only very hot place that I think I would consider living in. Um, yeah. Just because I love the vibe. I've been going to Key West for as long as I can remember in high school, and I've seen it grow from like what it was thirty years ago to what it is now, which is a little mm. commercialized, but still the vibe is there, you know, and, and it's, it, so Jimmy Buffett, I've been a fan since I would say 14 is when I first went to my first concert. And that is so um, cool. So how many times have you seen him? Probably over 50. That's amazing. Oh my yeah, God. I know. And, and, and when he passed last year, it, it that really must have been was really hard. I actually, so I heard that he passed from my ex-husband. My ex-husband was in London and obviously the news broke out there first. And when I woke up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday, that's the first thing I saw in text message. Um, and of course, I started to get tons of text messages from people who know me. Um, now, 
I had a TV interview an hour before, uh, after that. So I had yeah. to pull myself together oh my gosh. for the interview and be camera ready and all, you know, smiling. And I think my husband went to work or something and my, my new husband, you know, my, my new and improved version, he <laughs> went to work. So I was really alone. And then after I finished the interview, it was like grief immediately yeah. like just flooded me and at first I just kept thinking it's only a person it's only like this guy that he sings but he I can associate his catalog with so many different times in my life and places and good times and friends and again he's been sort of this constant and it's like a big brother you know that that mm -hmm. taught me about life being about enjoying the moment and not taking it too seriously and yeah I was reminded of a lot of that while I was there it was amazing it was like being with a big family over the weekend so oh, that's so wonderful yeah. you know I think it's you know it's interesting because a lot there there's like I you know sometimes I I know that what you're talking about in terms of the well it's just you don't know this person mm -hmm. or whatever right but at the same time, I think that there is an energy when someone like there's like, first of all, it's a soundtrack of your life, right? Mm -hmm. Like Duran yeah. Duran was the soundtrack of my life oh for my God, many, I love many, it. many years. And um, and now it's this tiny, tiny, tiny little band. Uh, one guy called We the North. There's like eight songs. I've been listening to them on repeat for eight years. Uh, mm -hmm. Eight years. <laughs> Not, it was further for more like four years. Um, they're eight songs, four years. Mm -hmm. But it's there's an it's just nice to know that this person is out there. It's nice to mm. know that the energy is there. And like when David Bowie passed or when Prince uh, passed, like these yeah. are energies that are no longer there. They've gone mm -hmm. on to do something else. The yeah. format in which they existed now mm -hmm. has gone. And there yeah. is a grieving that goes with that because not that I think that like, you know, Jimmy Buffett was going to release the next greatest hit. Right. But it's just nice to know that they're there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a comfort. Yes. You know, one of the, a couple of different uh, things that happened over the weekend is, I don't know if you know his last song. Well, he released, he released an album prior to him passing. And one of the songs a couple of days before he died, and I knew that he was sick because he had canceled stuff, but it was very hush hush about what was, why was he canceling? Nobody yeah. really talked about it. You couldn't find anything online. Um, in, I was on TikTok a couple nights before he passed, and I was thinking about how, you know, the Labor Day weekend show is always the one big thing, big show, and I've been to many Labor Day shows with him. But I thought, you know, it's it's interesting that he doesn't have a show coming up. So sure enough, TikTok, knowing my brain and the algorithm, you know how that works. Yeah, yeah. Of it just connected, it listening. Up. Yep. So um, immediately the account for Jimmy Buffett popped up and he had released a song called My Dog. And I was like, oh, this is a really cool song. It was just all about his dogs. And then the other song that released after he passed, it's called Bubbles Up. And basically is, you know, the concept of when you're diving and when you're underwater yeah. and you and, and diving can be a lot of pressure and can be mm -hmm. um, dark as well. Right. But then you can find your way to the surface by following the bubbles. And That's so, so that has become sort of this anthem for parrot heads that he kind of left the song to say, hey, in the middle of grief and the difficulty, there's always bubbles up. So love that. So a couple of things uh -huh. I... I needed to hear. It. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. See? That was... I love it. I love that. that... <laughs> I needed to hear that. Like, I, as you were saying it, I was <sighs> like, shit, where are my bubbles? <laughs> you know what? And the bubbles will come. And sometimes we yeah. don't see the bubbles, but then someone is going to have a bubble gun that is you're going <laughs> to see... You're going to say, and generate oh, just wait like a, a little yeah. straw, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, oh, wow. That was, oh. I was not expecting that. You really just hit, hit me like right in the heart. Nice Manessa. job. I, you know, when we first started, we talked about what we, how the interview was going to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> Julie, I was like, let's just talk. Spirit will take us where spirit wants it to and look and, at where and we and ended look up. Look at where we are. All right. We're good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm so glad that, that see things, things happen for a reason. I'm a firm oh. believer of that. Um, tell me, because I want to, I want to kind of catch this opportunity. And if you're open to this, um, why, 
are you looking or need those bubbles that will lead you home or will lead you to the surface? Um, you know, I think you go through periods in life where um, everything feels great. You know, mm -hmm. like the, everything's going your way and um, and uh, and you just you're feeling just good about everything. Right. And like and so in those moments, like you don't really like if you happen to be a trauma survivor, you mm -hmm. are think when is the shoe going to drop? Right. But I worked yes. really, really hard over the years in therapy to not have that instinct. So I'm able to sort of like just be in the space and enjoy the space and not anticipate that. Right. Mm -hmm. The challenge was sort of being in the space because I, I really I feel like we're on this earth to experience things right mm -hmm. and like and so that means good and the bad and whatever it is right so but the pendulum swings both ways which means that if you have a really great high and you're feeling good about everything then you are the, something will happen like it it's not yeah. this isn't like dooms this is that's just <laughs> life like the pendulum swings like that's yeah. what it does right and so when the pendulum swings in the opposite direction, typically when there's change, when there's growth, when there's like mm -hmm. that, that intersection of, you know, and the last, I think, um, several, say, let's say the last three or four years, I've been working so intentionally on my growth that for a lot of it, initially it was harder and the bubbles, you just don't think you're going to find them. You know, and when I first started, like say in 2018, intentionally doing work on all of the decolonizing mm -hmm. and and you know real like mm. painful work right um i couldn't i was doing all by myself because at the time there was not there weren't as many people talking the way we are now there's not as many mm -hmm. like i feel like the visibility has gotten greater we've created yeah. more community there's more oh, stuff right thank god thank, thank god. god it was it was really hard to do alone but i think that like the journey of growth is mm -hmm individual and so when you are in a space where you're trying something new or approaching a new challenge that is particularly painful which is where i'm at right now right i've been doing this long enough now to know that there's you know that the pendulum swings both ways it'll go back the growth but when you're in the moment and living in the moment sometimes you it's hard to remember that right so like when things are good that's not when you need to remember the pendulum's going to swing back and hit me in the face right that's where you want to stay in the moment but when things are bad, you have to remember that the pendulum swings yes. the other way, right? And so, so I happen to be in a, smart. in a swing and like, I just, you know, I sort of like, sometimes you can get caught up in like whatever stories there are. And then someone's like, hey, follow the bubbles. And the truth is what that, like what I hear with that is that like, you may be in a place where you feel challenged or difficult or where you're, you know, like on a hair trigger to cry or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever. But um your reality doesn't have to be what you think it is, right? You can look around and like you said, the bubbles are there, the people are there, the resources are there. Like I can sit here and say, I'm all by myself, all myself, but I'm not really, that's a, st that's a story, yeah. right? And so I think that's sort of like, so where I'm at it, I'm in a space of change. Um, and uh, it's, it's, you know, it's just one of the many, <laughs> one of the yeah. many, many that you hit. And today happens to be just one of those days where it's, it's a little bit more, poignant than others i was listening too much aha aha will do that to you you listen to aha and you're like like take on me as a happy song take but if on me but it, yeah so <laughs> i so it's jimmy buffett my jimmy buffett is aha and i love oh, aha God. with such a depth oh. uh my their catalog is giant and my sister and i actually traveled to europe several years ago before covid Ooh. to so we saw them in vienna and we saw them in oh god where else vienna and zurich and it was, Ooh. it was, it was an acoustic show. It was absolutely amazing. amazing. But the thing I've learned about AHA is that their music is very melancholy. And if I listen to too much of it, it will drive me into melancholy. Yes. And, There's so like, songs I that can, do that. And I can, I like marinating in the dishwater of melancholy. I can't, it's so delicious. Yeah, it is so too. delicious. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I, I have to say music to me sometimes expresses the words that I can't find for myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and as, as you were speaking about that pendulum, the one thing that kind of came up for me is, I don't know if you know the, the song forever young from Alphaville. Oh my God. Do I know versions. that song? I, right. Alphaville love them too. <laughs> me too. So that song is it, obviously it came out, you know, I'm going to date myself. It was one of my prom themes when I was in high school and the song itself for it, the song forever young, 
my the name Julie means forever young. So I've always adopted that song as my oh, song. That is a good, and there's that, that, that phrase in the song where it says, I'm hoping for the best, but I'm expecting the worst. Yeah. And I think that for so many times in my life, like you said, I, I'm i in a good place, but I'm always looking around like, how much longer is this going to last? Yep. And that, we can't, we can't live like that, but that's our tendency. At least mine, it is. Oh, it, absolutely. Yeah. It has been mine for a really, I don't do that as much anymore, mm -hmm. um, but it was my, like, when I, it, for that was one of the trauma things that I worked on yeah. was like, and it was actually one of the first thing I did. It wasn't even my idea. It was my therapist. Oh my God. This, this taught me a lesson about ageism. Oh okay. my God. Did it teach me a lesson about ageism? So um, this is many, many years ago. She is no longer my therapist because her practice grew so big that she actually stopped seeing clients. And I, I love her. She's amazing. Um, and um, so I found her online. Typically, the way I find my therapist is I go to psychology today and I just let spirit kind of like give me my Ooh. yes, no. I pull out like 15 or so and then mm -hmm. shortlist and the email. So this one and I go to meet her in this tiny little she's her first practice. I remember it was just a little room and a little house. Mm -hmm. Um that the sign was like this big. It was just adorable. And now she has like buildings everywhere. Oh my gosh. And she's like 28. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe 37-ish, right? Or no, mm -hmm. not maybe 37-ish, right? Uh, and I walk in and I'm like, what the heck is she going to teach me? She's a child, right? Mm -hmm. She's a child. I was very judgy, so judgy. And so I, but I was like, I'm already here. And so whatever, mm -hmm. right? And you know how it is when you, you've been trying out a lot of different therapists, uh, you get to the point where you're just like, I'm over it. Like, I don't want to. Oh, a hundred percent. I bet. And um, she blew my freaking mind and she just, so we're talking and first I'm like, tell me about your, she tells me or what she's done and whatever. And then she just gave me a suggest. So we're talking about, and she said, I said, I, what if, what if, what if, and she said, you seem to, what if, you know, a lot. And she goes, I'm going to give you a challenge. And I was like, nah, 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 no challenge, blah, blah. Right. Right. And she says, what happens if you don't say what if? Mm. right she said i just want to challenge you for one week i mean like for one week can you do that do you think you could do it for one week mm -hmm. and i was like oh i could totally Ooh. do it for one week and i was like and it's not gonna help but fine mm -hmm. um and so i did it okay. and it changed my life i because every for me it was like so i get you know let's say i get a big client well what if that client leaves what, what if i don't get the money what if they don't pay what if this like there's always yeah. something and so and then when those things are resolved then it's what if something else so my whole mm -hmm. life was just what if what if what if mm -hmm. because that's you know growing up in trauma that's how you keep yeah. yourself safe absolutely and so part of what i wanted to heal from i didn't want to feel so scared all the time mm. so scared all the time you know, and so I think you asked me earlier what what triggered that. I'm like, I don't I try hard not to be scared. So even yeah. when things are difficult, like mm -hmm. how can I embrace like how can we how can I embrace it yeah. when I am faced with a challenge that's new, that's scary, then I feel scared. And that's sort of like so that's I think that's what you saw there yeah. was like me be, was that fear moment. Yeah. It's oh my so, God, we're doing therapy. Is there any, do you take insurance? I don't take insurance, <laughs> but you know, this is just a complimentary <laughs> session for you. Uh, but I'm not going to keep you as a client because, you know, we're friends. So <laughs> um, for me, I, I hear what you're saying and I know that I've been there. One of the things I had, I, I, again, between coaches and therapists, one of my coaches, um, she voiced something that I typically would say to myself, but I was not as aware of myself doing it. Yeah. Right. Until she said, you know, this is something that you've done in the past. And then I thought, huh, you're right. And then I adopted yeah. the phrase when I'm scared. And by the way, I get scared a lot in the older I get, my gosh, uh, talk about like the trauma just bubbling up and me mm -hmm. trying to process a lot of it. But when that is happening, I remind myself, I'll figure it out. That's I will so figure it out. You will. I will. Because we have, because right? We have, right? Because we have so yeah. far. And that's, that is the truth. So far mm -hmm. we have. And, you know, one day, like we're going to die and we won't have figured it out. But at that point, we'll be dead. So it won't matter. Right. So, but between now and the time you're dead, mm -hmm. we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um. 
And I, I absolutely believe that is so, so good and mm-hmm. such a, because it's so empowering, right? Because you will. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, like when you say, like when you say the word, like, did it help you feel stronger or more confident? Like, how did it help change? Like when you feel afraid, because you still feel afraid. Yeah. Tell me how you navigate that space. You know, when I, um, I'll give you an example. When I was married to my ex and I probably knew in the first few months of being married that it was not going to work out. Yeah. And there were a a lot of different reasons, but I was intent on making it work. I'm like, I'm going to make it work. And there's a lot of things that happen that, I I mean, I, I, I could go on forever, but there was a moment in which I was very close to leaving the marriage. And I was so afraid in so many different levels. And I remember saying to myself, well, I'll figure it out. I've done it before. And, but I didn't um, believe myself. Yeah. Because I, I stopped listening to me saying, I'll figure it out. And it was easier to think of the, voices of other people and the what ifs that and 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 start to imagine well what would this person say and how will that affect me yeah as opposed to and when it came time for the marriage to end and by the way I I, I learned one day that he was unfaithful and I'm oh it's like the switch turn I'm like okay I'm leaving yep, and yep. it was I, I I didn't know where, how, what was going to happen, what I needed to do. But I started like, I know I got this. I'm going to figure it out. And what do I need to do? And I went into like business mode. It was like, boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. And I think that that's the thing where many of us stay stuck. Because the what ifs and the, the opinions of others become those little tentacles in the quicksand that pull us down as opposed to just mm-hmm. relaxing and letting ourselves float up. Right. And I think yep, that yep. that's, that's a lot of where people get stuck also. I think it's true. And you know, I think uh, we forget, you know, it's yeah. what I think about is when I was first born, right. I know that in early years of my life, there are things that I remember that I remember that I don't remember anymore, mm-hmm. but I know that I knew them then. Right. And these are yeah. memories of things or feelings or whatever it is. Like I, And I can sometimes get like a, not even a split second, like a split of a Mm -hmm. split second, like I'll feel it and then it'll be gone. Right. But I'll, I'll know what that is. Right. Mm -hmm. And my friend used to say that, like, that the veil of forgetfulness comes, you know, as you know, we, we move through. And I think that that veil follows us along. Mm -hmm. Right. And it continues to like help us to forget who we are. I think in some ways though, It also is the thing that needs to happen because if I had hung on to the bitterness, the pain of marriage, I wouldn't have allowed allowed myself to fall in love again Yeah, to be in my marriage today. And And that's so true. I think that the, the, it's like, I guess the whole concept, I don't have children, but I I hear all the time, right. That people forget the pain and then they right the pain of childbirth. Like you do the thing and they're like, I want to have another kid. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? (laughs) Right. Right. So I think that that's, that's kind of the same concept. That's, you know, Um, I think how would we, would we have the, there's a word in Urdu, the word it's himmat. And it's like my aunt and I were just talking yesterday and it's like a, it's like a soul will, mm. right? Like it's like the soul will that comes that you, that you, and it, the, it, I would say like, would you, would we have the himmat to continue to experience and do no. things if we did not have the ability to heal and forget and yeah. put things where they are, right? Like that's a really, mm-hmm. you know, and then some, it's, I like, that's, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm looking at um, every colorful thing behind you. And I just think <laughs> that, um, you are the type of soul that um collects this colorfulness that is reflected in life. Where where do you fight feel people lack to collect color in their life? Um, oh my god, that's a tough one. I think you know what? I think it's actually in um so 
I didn't have a lot of color in my life for many, many years. It was mostly black, right? Mm. And um, and uh, wore black clothes, whatever. Because I, I didn't like my body. I didn't like that. I didn't just, I was miserable. Was just, so I didn't have a lot of color. Plus there was a way in which your house was supposed to look. Yeah. Right. And like the way, whatever the way is, right. Whatever the way is. And, right. But, yeah. And we all like all of our parents and grandparents, they have the way we know mm -hmm. it, you know, you have a drawing yeah. room and then you use this for that and everything is to be a certain way. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm actually going to turn that cause like the, this behind me and all the color is actually, an, and this here is an expression of something else, which is that, uh, several years ago, I, so I'm Pakistani. I grew up overseas. Mm -hmm. My whole life, I was surrounded by lots of, not, not a lot of diversity in terms of, because we were all desi, right? Right. But like diversity compared to where I am now, right? Where there is not mm -hmm. a lot, right? And I, when I, when I lived in Boston, had a lot of diversity in terms of different life experiences, different races, ethnicities, mm -hmm. belief systems. There were just a lot of smorgasbord happening in there, right? And over the years, as I got more scared and worked harder to assimilate and worked harder, I started to become more beige in every way, right? So I, I embraced every part of my whiteness that I could, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what that's what leveraged my privilege. Oh, yeah, um, of course. I uh, and, and none of this was conscious, right? Well, actually, mm -hmm. the, the colonization of myself was conscious. But like what happened as a consequence, and I didn't realize this until about 2018, was I looked around and I realized that my whole life had become like Wonder Bread. Mm. Like I had just backed myself into a corner where everyone I knew was white. Mm -hmm. Everyone I knew and not, ever, not to say everyone who's white has the same life experience because that's not true of any race, ethnicity, culture, whatever. But it does tend to like someone from Pakistan, someone from Uganda, somebody mm -hmm. from uh, um, France is going to have a very yeah. different life experience than someone yeah. who was born and raised in the States. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that I didn't have. I didn't have. Um, I was, my life was so empty without these voices, these experiences, yeah. these just the, like, and, and I, and I realized that by, that somehow at some point I had just closed into this little box here. Right. Mm -hmm. And because I had a list of the things I was supposed to do and the systemic list of the things that you're supposed to do, lead you towards whiteness. They yeah. lead you towards all of the isms, the capitalism, mm -hmm. the patriarchy, mm -hmm. they lead you to that direction. Yeah. So now I wasn't getting a lot of exposure to any other ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And so I looked around and I was like, how did this happen? So at that point, my therapist and I were sort of, she was moving on into a different space. So I actually decided to go to a different therapist when I was picking. And so my, I, I specifically went looking for a therapist who specializes in dealing with multiracial issues and trans mm -hmm. issues. And at the time, I didn't even know I was trans. It was LGBTQ. <laughs> But I knew I needed somebody who knew more than what, because I was stuck and because I didn't understand how I got this way. How did I, wow. how did I, how do you go from being Pakistani, living in Pakistan, surrounded by diversity? I, obviously it happened. Yeah. So over the years of working with her, as I have let, like, found the issues, mm -hmm. navigated them, dealt with my own shit, and then found a way to turn it into the 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 joy or the tools for dis, dis, uh, uh, dismantling systems of oppression or whatever it is and inviting more color into my life not just from like a racial standpoint but i mean color in terms of all areas of the spectrum yeah. we're talking about whether you're chronically ill or you're mm -hmm. um ethnically different or whatever or you're trans or you or you like some of the my some of like the favorite people in my life right now are where you look at us and we're like I'm confused I don't know if you're mixed I don't know if you're a woman yeah. I don't know if you're a man and I'm like I love that right yes. so like it gave me the model to express mm -hmm. myself and that's when I came out so I think mm -hmm. that a lot of times the reason why people do not embrace color is because there's fear in ourselves that there mm -hmm. will be a rejection Mm -hmm. when we express that side of ourselves because the systems lead us in that beige direction mm -hmm. like that wonder bread mm -hmm. direction if i express that color i'm not part of the wonder bread direction yeah. right and so yeah. now i'll get left behind so i think that it's like a and then you know so i think that's sort of where it comes from did that answer your question i it did it did it you know there's so many different things that go through my brain as you were speaking um I, I want to go back. There, there's, I, I have to say it. The one thing that I thought of as you were finishing is uh, Jimmy Buffett has a song that says, we're all fruitcakes. <laughs> and <I think laughs> yes, that we are all fruitcakes and we have to embrace that. And we have to um, really be able to not be ashamed of it because that, then what we're doing when we don't embrace 
our freak flag, right? And right. we want to assimilate, we end up not being true to who we are, not stepping into who we are meant to be. And like you say, we're we're living in this beige. I and I really I have a hard time now stepping into just the beige. Yeah. In, in a world where um you know we we want to be controlled, I think, by the by the expectations of of what the world says is is you should be this, you should be that. We should like to have this beautifully curated home. We should not. I I think that that's the thing that that I'm trying to break away from yeah, or working yeah. towards. Not trying because I'm actively working on it. Um, but I, I love everything that you said. I think that for individuals who may be, oh my God, what are these two talking about? Uh, you talked about colonialism. You talked about all the other isms. Um, unpack those for someone who may be, may not know what we're saying. So in the context of, you know, some let's like bringing it down to just the person who's listening and how does this impact you? It's that we were all told stories as we were growing up, especially if you're a Gen X or boomer. Um, you know, I think it's changing for the younger generations, which I'm really grateful for because, you know, they they teach me a lot, like going right. back to my ageism thing. <laughs> now I learn, honestly, I learned so much from everyone younger than me. So like, I, I have recovered from that. I, I've recovered. Um, but so many of us find ourselves in this moment where we have been given the blueprint of these are the things you're supposed to do. And if you mm -hmm. do them, check those boxes off, then you will be happy because you'll be a productive member of society and everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. And at some point, and I, and I think we used to call this a midlife crisis, but I actually mm -hmm. think what it was, was people realizing that they had checked off all of the boxes and they hated their lives yes. and they were miserable Indeed. or that like, but they didn't know why, like, why is this? And for many of us, we realize that it's because we didn't, we don't want to do a lot of the things that we were supposed to, you know, and then, then what, then it's like, well, okay, I'm yeah. with you so far. I'm, I'm miserable. I want to change my, well, what do I do instead? How, mm -hmm. and we are not taught how to make a change, how to decide what we want for ourselves, how to express our needs. We're told that mm -hmm. asking for your needs is in, like what it is that you need is incorrect that you should not be asking for what you need and be quiet mm -hmm. and be happy with what you have and so on and so forth. These stories then uh, put us in a position where it's almost too much effort mm -hmm. to like make all yeah. like, as you know, but to figure it out. Cause it's a lot, I'd figuring out for almost broke me. Right. Um, yeah. The real Slim Sherry, if anybody listens to her on TikTok, she's amazing. She talks all Jesus. the time. She and I go way back. And I love um, her. Like, oh, she's I so great. Oh my I God. She's fabulous. you guys knew each other. Oh my, oh my God. God. I've known her for years. She was okay, on my podcast. I, I need to go and, and hang out with you guys on TikTok. Oh, she's so funny. Um, But she, like, she talks about these things all the time. And essentially, mm -hmm. the architect of these stories of who we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. is these isms and i call yeah. them the four horsemen of our conditioning that conditioned Ooh. us and it's not really four but they'll take care of all of this colonialism capitalism uh racism and the patriarchy you put those four together and just fit the others under the umbrella these are the four horsemen of our conditioning that mm -hmm. we just continue to believe and stay on the grind and stay on the grind yeah and yeah. This offers these conversations that we're having and the people that we've talked about and my mm -hmm. podcast and, and Melissa Bird, who we've talked about earlier, too. Love her. Love her. And these yeah. these are all of the ideas that as you listen to them and sort of just here, you mm -hmm. will figure out for yourself then, OK, I know I'm getting an inkling of what it is that I want or I, I have an mm. idea of who I may need to talk to next. Right. Because for each of us, the step, yeah. the next step is going to be different. But it's the first step over the first of many or another step on the journey that you're probably going to be on forever. But what happens mm -hmm. is that when we start to like drop those things and start to reclaim our own story, like the story we want to write. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. The freedom is so awesome. And it's the joy huge. is so good. It's so the rewards are like unparalleled. Yeah. I feel a lot of times that. I'm in a different universe, right? And 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 I feel like I unpacked and I I shed a lot of that. Like this doesn't serve me. This was somebody else's expectation. This was somebody else's belief. Yeah. And as I keep walking in this journey, it's not that I'm trying to get to a destination because there's no getting there until yeah, we're dead, yeah. right? But 
I know that as I'm walking through, I my path continues to cross with people who like don't get it. And I think, is it my job to to teach them, show them, share with them? And I realize that my job is just to be me. Yeah. Because I can't change somebody else. And I can't also, you know, wonder if, well, you know, maybe if I do this, they'll change or they'll become or they'll be enlightened because maybe my enlightenment is not what they need or want. And it may not be enlightenment for them, right? Like, Mm -hmm. so, and I think that's actually interesting what you say is like what my, my current task that I'm doing, which is interesting Mm -hmm. and it's tough. So like, you know how we see ourselves as like, I'm in, the, I'm the main star of my movie and you're the main yeah. star of your movie. Right. And like, we're talking and it's hard for me, unless I'm intentional about it to see you in another way, other than in the context of my movie. Yeah, right? that's right. Absolutely. And so it takes a lot of intentional thought, especially with people that you're close to. So I've, I've been trying to do this with people I have like that, that I, you know, like my wife and my sister and, you know, like people that you're more likely to like <laughs> get into an argument with at any point in yeah. time. Right. But just because like everybody comes and this and this is why we my we I typically don't tend to get in like to arguments or anything like that because <laughs> um they are very good at that, right? It's my sister's amazing at it at, at basically <laughs> turning the light and saying, like, okay, Syrah, this is Syrah's movie, right? And like, mm-hmm. what is Syrah's like? I'm watching Syrah, and like then suddenly yeah. it's not about me, it's about that person. And then it's it becomes about, that about person. what does Absolutely. that person need mm-hmm. as opposed to what does that person need in the context of what I think they need. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And yeah. that's that is some a journey I'm currently working on because I I have a tendency to get just really excited and then like I roll over <laughs> before like I'm I realize yeah. that this isn't what's needed. And so I that's a growth. That's something I'm working on right now. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's part of the process. Um, in in speaking about Melissa Bird, um, she Love was her. very influential in the last year, whether she knows it or not. And we hang out. Did I introduce you to Nancy and Amy, the passionistas? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I just was on their podcast yesterday oh and God. they've been on my podcast. Like we just, <laughs> I, I love them by the way. And, and, oh and God, I love them. I'm going to be part of their book that they're putting out. I can't wait. That's amazing. Yes. Oh my gosh. And if anybody is listening, join yeah. the passionistas. They're amazing. They're okay. so amazing. And, and the work that they're doing is incredible. But, um, so Melissa and I, and I, um, spoke, I would say a couple months before my mom broke her pelvis. And then I went through this whole thing with her traveling back and forth and a lot of, uh, you know, dark times because of what she was going through and family dynamics, of course, which we all have. Um, But I released Melissa's episode while I was away and dealing with all of this. And I came back to, I came back to that conversation and that conversation is really what kind of carried me. Um, we she introduced me to the book uh, Mary Magdalene. Have you read that book? I have not, but I've heard of it. Yes, you okay? Talk to Melissa about this book. Okay, I'm going to. Um, it's by Megan Waters, and I grew up in a very religious Catholic environment. Mm-hmm. You know, I was the good girl in high school, the church girl. Um, but the biggest thing that I, I did, you know, that was scandalous is when I married my first husband and he was Jewish and people were like, wow, why like, do oh you Oh my marry? goodness, gas, what? That was like, what are you doing? And I remember that was like, think my first, like, um, like have a nice day, people, right? When I said, well, he, Jesus was Jewish, right? Yep. And and I started to see that there, at end, I will say, people come into your life for a reason, the marriage was great in some ways, terrible in others. But the thing that it gifted me, <coughs> excuse me, is my ex really questioned everything that I believed in and asked me, why do I believe that? And I think we need those people in our lives. What are your thoughts? I agree. One, you know, um, Ali actually, it's really interesting. So um, Ali always made, and that's what I love so much about her is that she always makes me question why and like it's uncomfortable, but, and you know, and as a result, 
I have because she is a she used to be many years ago. She used to be a skeptic. And um, so she questioned everything. And, you know, it was because of the questioning that I re- that I was able to decide, figure out like what my own sort of perspectives were. I think that there's different variations of questioning. Right. So like there's questioning that's like challenging. So almost like dismissing. And then there's que- questioning like curious. And then there's questioning like I'm you know, uh, you and I like, so for example, let's say we're talking about, uh, you know, my, my friend Katie and I, we talk Marco like every day. And sometimes there'll be like these abstract conversations where like, she'll say something or I'll say something. And then we will, we're both autistic. We both have ADHD. So we'll both be like, okay, let's let, and so we have a really great way of like challenging each other. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think you absolutely need those people in your life for sure to help you flush out the ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that also for intentional learning, like they, mm-hmm. there's like, I, I like having coaches who like know more than I do. Right. So like, I mm-hmm. always have some sort of a coach going on, depending on what it is I want to learn too. at any given point in time. <laughs> um, and that, you know, it's a, it's an, and most of it's, 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 I find that they are able to sort of, because their entire job is to help me move through that. So obviously if that's yeah. something, if someone has the, the <clears throat> luxury and the privilege of doing that, that is an amazing act of self-care. Amazing. <sighs> Absolutely. I, 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 um, I think that sometimes we really, um, step away from that self-care because again, we get so caught up in everything that's going on. I know that I try to live my life without regrets. Um, your podcast is called stop shooting yourself. Stop Tell shooting. Stop shooting all over yourself. Stop shooting all over yourself. Why? What, 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 what was the story behind that? Um, it was actually going back to what we talked about earlier. Like as I started to deconstruct why I hated my life, it was because I had done everything I was told that I should be doing Mm -hmm. and like, and why, and then it was like, why should I be doing X? Why should I be doing Y? And then I realized that there was a lot of these ideas or threads that are common with all of us. Like these are, Mm -hmm. and not everybody has every one, but these are, again, if you're living in a system, you're going to be some of them are going to be very much the same. Right. And what I found was, so at the time I was a coach and I wanted to help people, obviously that's why I was a coach. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to be the one who would sit and I would help you. But I realized after doing it for a couple of years that what I'm actually really good at is diagnosing somebody's problem. Mm. Right. But often these, these are multifaceted issues that are built on a house of cards And so it could be any one thing, but like someone may want to work on this one thing first, but I'm not a therapist. I'm not qualified to Mm -hmm. say. And so, and therapy is only one piece of the puzzle. Therapy helps you figure out what Mm -hmm. happened in the past. Coaching will help you operationalize that for the future. And so what I, this, I, when I restructured my business in accordance with Toy Smith, who taught me how to uh, have business beyond profit which was amazing. Nice. She's like, she taught me about how to navigate the capitalist world, make money and mm. still redistribute. Um, I wanted to connect people with, so now I, I, people will listen and they'll connect with somebody because any one of these people could be the person for their card that they want to work on first. Right. Or if somebody comes to me and says, I've got these because I have three um, slots every week for anyone who wants to just book a call. We'll talk. You tell me what's going on. And then I will say, okay, I understand what's going on. You need to talk to this person, this person, and this person. Love it. And then you decide which one. These are all coaches. These are all people who can help with the very specific issue that you'll need to work on to be able to kind of let go of the story of I'm supposed to be this way because I was told to. It's to help people. It's hard to write the blueprint. Like if you take away the blueprint of the isms, Mm -hmm. then you're left with nothing. So then who, what blueprint? And that's terrifying. Yeah, and Absolutely back away because they don't know I I did right and so yeah. this is for them to be able to know where to go so that you're so that when you have that momentum you can run with it mm. I I love talking to you I love listening to I love everything talking to that you. you're saying I think that it's such a um it, you when you find right the people that resonate with you when you find the the crowd that you belong in that you can dress and all kind of uh like uh like this weekend at Jimmy Buffett, right? Like we could dress like <laughs> um crazy parrot heads and nobody uh is more excited than to see you in the, you know, in in the paraphernalia than another person that mm-hmm. that 
they see you. Star um, Trek's like that. Star Trek is totally like that. Yeah, Star Trek is like that. Um, how are you navigating? We're in a in a very um, interesting world right now. Yep. Um, how are you navigating your mental well being? Um, you know, my decolonization coach is the one who really helped me with this. So for mm -hmm. me, um, there are, in order for me to be able to continue to do the work of dismantling systems of oppression, I have mm -hmm. to protect my mental health, like really, really carefully. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really careful about the kind of media that I consume. Um, mm -hmm. I have a coach and a therapist to help me through it. Again, these are all having these things as a privilege. Right. And so mm -hmm. I appreciate that I have access to it. Um, I also, I vote, but I don't listen to the news. And the reason why I don't listen to the news is because there's not like, I'm doing the work that I can do to dismantle the systems. But um, I grew up in Pakistan and Karachi during mm -hmm. incredibly violent times. I yeah. was held hostage when I was 14. I was yeah. just my, like, I've, I've, that was just one of many, many things that happened. So for mm -hmm. me, what I see happening now in this country and this world is just a, a more of an more, more and more. So for me, my big belief is in money solves problems. And so you have to win at capitalism to be able to do that. And so redistribution mm -hmm. is a very important part of what I do. So mm -hmm. the fact that I'm able to uh, redistribute and uh, show love to people mm -hmm. monetarily, mm -hmm. um, that fills my heart. Actually, one of them, I want to do a plug for loving black single mothers, which is just a cause that is really dear to my heart. It's Toy Smith. Um, we're actually going to be moving into her Christmas holiday special, which Ooh. is incredible, where basically I send, you know, I and other people like me send in X amount of dollars each month that then gets redistributed. And, you know, I trust Toy with everything. Well, let me know uh, how so I can help and support that. It's amazing. So for me, uh, giving back to the world, being in community with others like you, like Melissa Bird, like my therapist, like, like being in community is very important. Um, so yeah, so I think, and, and, um, and, uh, um, exercising self-compassion, self-compassion, because, um, wow. the difficulty in the world we live in today is that it is the, the systems are made or designed <clears throat> to make us feel hopeless and like, we can't make a difference. And like, so it is so important to recognize that, like pace yourself. <laughs> like this is a marathon, not a sprint. And so like, yeah. and there are voices out there that will always make you feel like you're not doing enough. Like you need to be more, do more. Mm -hmm. There's a desperate need because yeah, we, there is a desperate need, but if we're going to make sure that we are here to continue to do it, you have to take care of yourself. That is actually mm -hmm. the most liberating yeah. act and an act of resistance is taking right. care of yourself for sure. I agree. I, I used to be such a news junkie. Um, Me too. Oh my God. When, All the time. And very similar to you growing up in El Salvador, I experienced, and again, I never would have like 10 years ago even thought this was trauma, right? But I grew up in a, in a, in a war. I was 10, 11. And I was seeing people being murdered. I was hearing explosions. I uh, knew people being kidnapped like you were. And we sort of normalize that and kind of move away from it. A lot of the stuff that, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I cannot live in fear, but certainly the cautious in me of what I've experienced, you know, makes me mm -hmm. want to know once in, in checking into the news was always somewhere of like being in control. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. But and I, I think and that makes that absolute can't. sense for sure. I think I looked at the news. I think I looked at the other day, but like the news doesn't change from day to day. It just gets worse. So like the situations continue yeah. to happen. So I feel like, like I, like I'm with you. Like, it's like, I, I feel the control. My, my mom did that. And when we lived in Pakistan, uh, she always had the news on because if you, mm -hmm. when I was little, the explosions, if you heard where they were, you would know where the explosions were that night. And so, you know, if you could fall asleep or not, because it's like, oh, right. okay, it's over there. And like, it's not over here. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you, sometimes you'd hear them coming closer, you're like, fuck. <laughs> That's right. I, but I, I wouldn't have called it trauma. I didn't, I never called that trauma until like 10 years. It's so funny, yeah. right? You're like, I would say like, it as if it was oh, nothing. Wait a minute. I have trauma. Like I used to think like, oh, these people, wow, they went through so much. They have so much trauma in their life. And I kept thinking, I've had such a good life. I've never <laughs> had any issues. And I'm thinking like, what the hell, right? Um, but that's, I think, the beauty. I, I want my TED Talk, right, that I, I, mm -hmm. is, that I have not done yet, but it's there, is 
you're going to joy in trauma, right? Because there's, you're not alone. I'm not alone. We are people. And there are people right now who are Mm -hmm. living in trauma, still in those zones and they're finding ways to find joy. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the, that is such a powerful lesson that we can find joy even in like, you Mm -hmm. know, you see videos coming out from Palestine of people who are trying the little kids dancing, because even though everything is shit, they're Mm -hmm. still finding ways yeah. to take care of themselves dance find the joy where they like in the little areas that they can and that is that is yeah. magical that is magical i love that and i think that a lot of people you know i i i want to i i want to refocus for whoever is listening to this for as long as you focus on and and this is like the stark contrast and what's going on in our country right there's a place of joy and then there's a place of doom mm-hmm. and we have to choose what resonates with us. Is it the doom or is it the hope and joy that, Hey, things are not perfect. Mm -hmm. And, but we are going to be able to find the color the bubbles, the whatever you want to call it, as long as we're willing to pay attention and take the step to be joyful, colorful, you know, just accepting and being there for others as well, mm-hmm. as opposed to just bottling it in and making it just, you know, I need to be safe. I need to be in charge. Yep. I can't yep. look at anybody else. Um, anyway, we we can unpack a lot of this. Um, I can't wait for you to talk to Melissa Bird. Talk I know I'm going to talk to her in an hour, actually. Talk so to her I'm about Mary Magdalene that. and see, uh, you have to read the book. Uh, so I read it and I also listened to it. And I think I, I, I might have said this to her. Um, we need to um, d- do a trip to France to mm-hmm. the to the grotto of Mary Magdalene and just take a group of women and have so much fun in this trip. <laughs> <laughs> I will bring it up with her. Bring it up. Bring it up. Um, where do people contact you? Where do people can gain more of your beauty, greatness, spirit, anything that resonated with them from this conversation? You can find me on Manessa TV. Everything you need is on YouTube. Look for Manessa. I'm Love the only it. one. <laughs> I really Love it. Okay, so I'm I'm working more diligently in my YouTube because I have a lot to say. And and sometimes, you know, in the podcast, um, my husband was like, Oh, you can't say that. I'm like, Yes, I can. It's my like, podcast. It's your podcast. You can say whatever it's you my want. Podcast. He's 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 a little more cautious than I am. If it were up to me, you know, my opinions will be a little more <laughs> out there. Uh, yes. And then for the individuals that are listening, and this is something that I like to um, remind people, listening to a conversation is great. Taking action for your life is better. What would be one actionable things that people can maybe work on in their lives based on everything that we talked about today? I want to challenge everybody to go one week without saying what if. <sighs> So good. I'm going to try that. Yeah, I'm going to give you the same challenge my therapist gave me that put me on the path to where I am today. Just what for one week, try not to say what if and tell me what happens on the end. And tell we me mean it mentally also. It. You can't think that. We're not you just You can't saying... think it. No, no, you can't. No thinking what if. So when you think what if, you redirect and say, nope, not thinking that. And then just not go do that. anything else. So good. So good. <laughs> oh, I could talk to you forever, but my coughing will come back. And then, I you know, know, it's I know. not going to sound as great. And I got to get I ready for my, my interview with Melissa. And you for my coughing already. And, you know, it's, it's, it's great the trouble. To you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you. And by the way, uh, keep in touch. Let's, let's, you know, keep connecting. I, you know, let's not have a lot of time go by. Are you, did you join the Passionistas group? I did. Well? I did. I'm in the okay, Passionistas yeah. actually. Yep. So, we'll, so we can we'll hang, hang out there. Out in there. Yeah, we'll hang awesome. out in there. Absolutely. All right, Manessa, thank you so much. And this is Manessa. Uh, I am, or she is, or they are. Uh, Manessa. Please, Manessa. It's only Manessa, people. Go and connect <laughs> with her. We're doing that now. I'm going to be one name. Manessa. Go and connect with them. Go and let them know that they they are just incredible and that you got a lot of, from this conversation. Thanks again for being here, my thank friend. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Don't forget, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Thanks for listening to Casa de Confidence. 
We thank you for listening. And if you want more, go to casadaconfidencepod.com. Check Julie out on her socials as Julie DeLuca Collins. And you can also check out her website at goconfidentlycoaching.com. Have a great week. And don't forget, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Hi, everybody. I know that sometimes we get very lonely in this entrepreneur journey. And I want to invite you to join us into our limited time only purposeful you mastermind. For many of us entrepreneurs, we believe that we can do it all. But the reality is that doing it alone only creates a lot of overwhelm. So join us at the purposeful you mastermind. You can find out more information by going to bit.ly forward slash Julie's mastermind. This is going to be the place where you are able to then unlock your full potential and achieve long-term success for your business, push you behind your current limits, expand your connections, discover new ideas, and implement them with confidence. You're going to get the support in all aspects and transforming you to the six-figure business you've been looking for. Pause and get off the hamster wheel if you've been spinning around. This is a time where you can get that support from like-minded entrepreneurs that are here to join you in your journey. Together, we can challenge the assumptions and land the speaking engagements and opportunities we want to grow our business and make an impact in the lives of people. See you then. Remember, you can find the mastermind at bit.ly. Julie's Mastermind.